If you like the Alien Universe, prepare to have your face hugged. On a super special edition of Top of the Stack. Thank you for joining us for this week's Top of the Stack. It is in fact an unusual episode. Indeed. We are not reviewing comics from this week due to the fine folks at Dark Horse mm -hmm. and the creators of this comic got our hands on an early issue of Aliens Defiance number one and we are going to give you our thoughts and let you know if you need to run out and pre-order that and pick it up when it comes out. So let's just jump on into this. Let's do it. Alien Defiance number one is written by Brian Wood, art by Tristan Jones, and colors by Dan Jackson. If you don't know who Brian Wood is, he's done many things from mm -hmm. X-Men to DMZ on Image Comics. He does Starve and the upcoming Black Road. And Tristan Jones, if you're not aware of him, he did the run of Mad Max Fury Road oh. Furiosa, which right. I was a big fan of. Always. As well as worked with Brian Wood mm -hmm. on uh, his Rebels series that he has. But let's just get it started. This is Alien Defiance number one by Dark Horse Comics. And let's just talk about the characters first. All right. We have a woman named Zulu Hendricks. Indeed, yes. She is an injured colonial marine. We find out in that flashback she has... She's being put together. Yes. She doesn't feel competent in herself, really. She can't walk right. And and she tries to hide it from everyone that she is in pain or uncomfortable yeah. with herself. Yeah, she wants to be a, a badass. Hoorah, right. you know, colonial right. marines. Um, so she gets basically put on this mission that's supposed to be easy breezy. In her mm -hmm. mind, it looks easy breezy. Go to a derelict ship and put in some codes and give the flight information down to Wayland yutani Corporation. Mm -hmm. And that's that. But as we know, things don't go as it is. This is an Never alien that franchise. Um, so back to the characters. She's accompanied by a group of synthetics. Yes. They call themselves as a whole Davis. Mm-hmm. So it kind of... And, and if you look at them, they kind of remind me of like Alien Isolation had... These Worker Joe synthetics that are very... They look just like them. But they're Worker Joe. They do simple tasks and, and this and that. But they have the like the personality of right. someone like Bishop from Alien. Mm -hmm. um, aliens. So these are the characters. They're working together. Always, almost always, the synthetic is a bad guy. They have their own mm -hmm. mission. As we know, they're going to this... Wayland, or this, this, the ship for Wayland yutani right. to do what they do. Nothing's ever as it seems. What happens when they get there? Well, when they get there, they discover that it's like basically a huge massacre almost. They look at these cameras, they see all these horrible images of people shooting at things, and they hear what's the word? Water? And. The acid. Yes, the acid. And so that basically just turns the mission all from supposed to be an easy task to we got to get these people out of there. What? And it goes black. And it goes black. And then we're left to figure everything out from then on out. Don't want to spoil everything, but we got to kind of get into it to let you know what mm -hmm. you're getting into when you pick up this series. So really we have a synthetic who goes by the name Davis, mm -hmm. and our hero protagonist, Zulu Hendricks, Zulu. who wakes up to find out that there were these aliens, uh, and the synthetic has gone off protocol, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. He's gone rogue. He, they've always been designed to do exactly what it is. Be loyal. Even if it's, you know, against the humans mm -hmm. that are on board. Do the mission. Get that specimen, bring it back so we can use it. Right. Well, just like everything else, they want. we, we find out that Yutani wants to use these creatures as weapons, just like the engineers do. Yes, weapons in, of war. And Prometheus. Mm -hmm. And our hero isn't quite sure what to think of that. She even makes a point like, and I like how they have her constantly talking to herself in her head, narrating the comic, mm -hmm. but also giving us insight into her thoughts. Like right. she says, uh, you know, 
can I get the gun out and fire a shot enough time? Quick enough. No, it, she's, she's struggling with what to do in this situation. Mm -hmm. But I really like the dynamic here. I like the setup with the narration. I like the gritty and darkness and sci-fi cl cleanness of the ship in the artwork. One, um, one piece of artwork I wanted to point out was that I was like, whoa, that looks awesome, was when we see a xenomorph with a guy on the ship and the xenomorph just poof, rips the guy's head the off spine. and the spine is all hanging down and it's all dripping this white Yeah, it was blood. one of the, da the Davis mm -hmm. synthetics. Yeah, yeah the... and it was all very detailed. Yeah. Like you could see like little, I don't know the word, but ligaments or, you know, tendrils hanging off the spine and things. I really enjoyed it. The, the thing about this art is you can tell that he has, Tristan Jones, has a appreciation for this franchise. Yes. Those xenomorphs look really good. Mm -hmm. uh, it The ships give me that feeling again of, you know, that clean alien feel but dirty at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it's, it's really good as far as capturing that atmosphere. Indeed. When you find out that these combat synthetics can actually change their programming if they don't like it. Right. They're there to change, the, to save the human race mm -hmm. and he's going to do whatever's possible. And I like the comparison. I feel like this Zulu Hendrix is really like Shaw from Prometheus, the main woman. Right, yeah. Or even Ellen Ripley from Alien, the, the main franchise. Mm -hmm. Kind of has a parallel a, there. A good mixture of both. Yeah. And then, obviously... The synthetic reminds me more more of like a David than a yep. than or even a bishop because mm -hmm. they they are doing their own thing and going out there and the end the the way this kind of plays out with them saying screw it we're gonna do what we want to do and going out on this mission and the mm -hmm. scene where they're both in that cockpit like ready to go right really reminds me of the end of Prometheus yes I got that where too. Shaw and David are going. On, they're going. Mm -hmm. They're going on its mission. They don't know what it is they're going to find, but they're ready for it. Yes. And that is what excites me about this comic series. Great setup with the narration, the writing, the art, uh, the atmosphere. But it's really that I feel like I'm back in it. Like, they are ready to go. We don't know <laughs> what they're going to see, what they're going to find, but they're on a mission and they want to accomplish it. And you got that dose of alien you needed. Yep. <laughs> Seeing as Prometheus 2 is not being made. Let's not go into well, all that. <laughs> but this is a good step. It this is. is a good thing to hold me over until mm. that Alien Covenant is finally out into the world. So overall, what do you think about the story? It's awesome. It's set, it's set up perfectly to make me want to continue reading it. I'm excited to see where it goes. The ending made me super excited. Hoorah! Yep. <laughs> um, all in all, great. I give it a Christian Bale. Yep. I really like the story. I like, like I said over and over again, I like how it narrates it. You're in the mind of this woman. You get a feeling that her and these Davis characters, or eventually maybe just mm -hmm. character, are going to become friends of some sort. Maybe he's going to screw her over. Who knows? Maybe he's doing it for his own gain. Maybe he's doing it for the engineers. <sighs> Who knows, but I like the sense of adventure that we're about to go on, of horror and terror and sci-fi-ness. <laughs> it's just all around good, the art, the atmosphere. So Alien Defiance, number one, which hits the shelves in April, is getting a Christian Bale from Geeked Up TV. So that is it for this week's Top of the Stack. We did not do our usual reviewing of what we got this week because we got this this week and it was good enough to take up the whole time. Indeed. We want to let you know, too, because it is our favorite franchise, and it was important to get that out there, get those pre-orders going. Uh, if it sounds like something you are interested in, and let us know what you think. When you pick those up, you see this review, let us know uh, if you think we're dead wrong or if we are right on target, and let us know in those comments below. We'll get back to each and every one of you. Give us those thumbs up when you like and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Vine, and Twitter. But until next time, stay geeked up. And always hug a xenomorph. Always. 